This is Jerry. Welcome to another edition of DIY with Jerry's Garage. We are back on a 2015 Ram 1500 Tradesman with the 3.6. And we're going to put a 2000 watt power inverter in it. The power inverter I've had for years. And uh, for once I just like to have it in the truck. I have a little... It's going to be a little bit different because we're going to hook it up to a uh, 115 watt switch um, that actually with some of these trucks comes with it as, as a power inverter that you can hook up. And we're going to show you how to be able to do the switch to the power inverter just using a power cord. and. Uh, You'll have 2,000 somewhere near that coming through to that switch. Um, I'm never going to use it to for power tools or anything. Mostly it's going to be used so my wife can charge her phone on that side of the truck. Um, it has to be done a certain way with certain things. And um, obviously if you don't, um, you could have a fire. So you got to be very careful with this stuff. And that's what I plan to do. So, and I will show you what I did. Um, if you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. It's that simple. Um, but it is a certain amount of work, and you got to have certain types of tools, and you got to have certain this, and you got to have certain that. So, I'll be telling you what all this is. All right, is. so we have installed uh, our breaker. It needs to be as close to the battery as possible. If I bring it back, there's the battery, there's the thing. Okay, because uh, if you're going to have like any kind of power thing or whatever that's going to, you know, basically uh, cut that off, you want, if there's going to be any kind of fire, sparks, anything like that, you'd rather have them in the engine compartment than inside the truck with you. Okay? So you want to make sure that you are uh, securing that. I use self-tapping screws with this grommet on them. It's a rubber one, and it just gives it a little padding. Uh, actually, these came... These are actually used down here uh, on these like carports to screw them to the uh, ribs of the uh, carport. Uh, and the rubber grommet, what it does is uh, keeps the hole from leaking. In this case, that's not necessary, but it does give it some padding. And this is plastic like the rest of the world, so <clears throat> that's that. So what we did so far is I cut the other end off of this, which was exceedingly painful. I don't like cutting stuff that's brand new up, but that's how it works in this application. I, did, I am keeping the ends because they look odd, but they seem fairly strong for something made in China. And then we let it through this. There's a hole in the firewall. Most car trucks have them, cars, whatever, for add-on stuff. Um, and let... Uh, Wound it up in through there, and uh, hopefully now we go and do the hard part, which will be fun. We have to move. We have to uh, undo some trim down the driver's side of the truck, so we can get this under the, under the uh, rubber mat. That's our nutty dog who cannot shut up, is insane over food, and is trying to kill both me and the child. I'm convinced of it. And uh, she's not going to stop. We have a visitor. The dog from next door is here. So this is not going to end until I give everybody a dog cookie. You know, we're not people anymore. We're just not in charge. Yeah, it's just a, just a plain and simple. Anyway, let me go do that.
Okay, next thing we got to do, get this out of the way. I'm going to try to run it up under here somehow, over under the seat or something. However, to get to that, we got to get this up. And this has been out about 50 or 100 million times, so that's not going to be too difficult. Was my head in the way? Mm -hmm. Pull out the floor mat. I probably should vacuum the floor. This floor mat has been the only truck I've owned for probably 20 years. And it, that's why there's sand everywhere. Okay. Those are probably important. That's not. Now, let's look. All right. How far up does this go? It's not in the shot. Doesn't matter, man. Okay. So, I guess we're not doing that. Put this under here. Nope. Put that there. Back more back up. Set up the truck. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I pulled this out pretty much the same as every other piece. It's just in there with clips. I ran it from where it was all the way down the side to where you see it sticking out here. Then I pulled this, okay, and we will get it around here and up under the back seat where this thing will live, simply because it doesn't fit under the seat. And I'm not thrilled about this, but that's, that's what has to happen. As a matter of fact, I'm going to bring it all the way up so that this comes back down and I'm able to put this back in see here now make sure the cheap rubber floor of your truck which is crap is under here as best you can okay now everything is held down to here then we take the water bottle out <laughs> I went to town to get water for that bottle out of the machine. I actually said out of stock. I don't know how water gets out of stock, but it did. 
nevertheless, my 20 year old sunshade. Okay, then we lift up the back seat. Okay, this is the cubby hole. It's going to go in here. This is the and power into. inverter. Okay, it's a uh, Chicago Electric. Obviously, it's from Harbor Freight. It's an old one, but it works. So why get a new one when the old one works? So what I did was I got these two hooked up, red on red, black on black. You can see the red here and the black here. Black wire goes on there. Red wire goes on there. Then I hooked up where I left the clamps still on. Hooked those up to the battery. So when you run this, make sure you leave them close enough to the battery. I just barely made it. But enough to, when I went and turned the power on in this thing, it turned on. Which is all you need. So, that said, we're ready to move on to the next thing, which is a on-off switch in the front of the cab. Okay, so that's the front of it. It's got two plugs, the on-off switch. It's nothing fancy. There's also four screws, one here, 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 and here. It brings this front off. And what we're gonna do is take this off, cut the um, black and the red wire in here, okay? And then get some more wire, run it from the front of the truck back here to somewhere. I'm going to start somewhere in the front of the truck where we put it on off switch. So every time that I want to use this or my wife, we don't have to run back here to turn it on. We just, from the dash, you know, it's, it's called convenience. So we're going to do that. And it needs to be run. Uh... We're going to need about probably six or eight feet to get it from where I'm probably going to put it, which we'll decide in a minute, and back to here. Okay, folks, uh, I've got this all wired up. I'm going to show you exactly what I did. First, I drilled a hole here through the front of this after I took these four screws out, four, two on each side, up and down. <coughs> and I also rewired this switch, which right now won't work because I got it on a switch up front. But and then I took this, this is put a 10 um, amp fuse in it. So there's two wires on this switch, they're red and they're black on this particular model okay now what i did when i did this hole was i took a file file down this side and the inside and around the middle in inside the hole that way it's not you know going to cut through the wires all right then i brought out my black one i hooked all three together so it not only works on this switch when it needs to okay it also works on the switch up front, all right? So I, Cause that's just the way I did it. And then I ran all these wires over here, down through there, around inside of the part of the seat belt that you use, okay? In here, uh, horrible camera work, sorry. And then we come around the truck, down here, all the way up and underneath there to under there now this panel right here just pulls out and i brought them up okay uh let me get the light okay all right now we're getting in here oh dear god i am getting too old and fat for this Anyway, we took the panel off. For this particular truck, up here there's two screws 
You take them out and you just yank on this. It's going to make a loud noise. Don't get nervous. Okay, it's fine. And this will come off. And then you got to undo your wires, all these. Now, these things, don't worry about it. They only fit their, their size sorted, I guess. They'll only fit. God damn it. They'll only fit in the, in, the, in the hole they go in. They won't fit in another hole, so you'll be fine. And uh, undo them. Now, I didn't undo the transmission. That's the trans, you know, the gear shift, basically. All right, because I didn't need to. I've had this off so many times, it's ridiculous. Okay. And then I ran my wires up and through here to the switch that turns off the power inverter. Okay. And then I took that cord you saw in the front of the power inverter. This is it here. I drilled a hole in the factory switch. Now to take that apart, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's two clips on each side. You gently pull them up and work it off on both sides. And then uh, there's a piece in there that's going to be in the way, so you need to take that out. And it also is the one with the two wires are black and red on there. Uh, and, you know, so you're going to have to do uh, take that apart. Drill a hole in the back big enough for whatever you're putting through here. Now, keep in mind, it can't be too big. This cord was almost too big, okay, to get this back together. As a matter of fact, I use C-clamp. <laughs> Okay, the wires that were in there were very small, and they weren't run from the outside. They're the inside because there was already, if, if I could show you here, there's a, right there. That's where the wiring harness, if you use a regular one, uh, the, have the module and everything that goes in there. As a matter of fact, that is it. It's in a dummy plug right now, but, and I won't be using it, obviously. Now, uh... You know, I had to do some modifications right inside of here for this switch. Um, these wires have to be up and above the AC, the AC vent so that when you put the this back on, this piece goes in there. And if you can see here, this is kind of like uh, weather stripping to keep the, uh, you know, I guess for the air or whatever. I, I don't know. It's not really much of nothing, but then, you know, dodge. So uh, this can be turned off at any time, turned on any time, and we have a working thing. Keep in mind, all I'm doing is using it for, uh, you know, my wife will use it to charge her cell phone. Literally, that that's probably going to be the extent of it. So wouldn't worry about it a whole lot. Anyway, that's it. And then when you put it on, these clips right here and here and they're all the way around they line up with these holes and you just kind of gently punch it back into place put your two screws back in up here and you're good to go and by the if you have this little cubby up here there's a piece of rubber if you get something uh, like plastic or whatever underneath it it just pops right off and then it pops right back in i don't this here is for my uh, backup camera and so forth, So, which is um, mounted right there, the screen. I uh, can't really see it's upside down, but that's it right there. Uh, beautiful thing, actually. I love it. Uh, so that's it. As far as hiding the wires and so forth and on and like that, uh, it's none of this... Uh, it, you know, it's self-explanatory and just take your time. Don't ape anything plastic. Just take your time because if you do, you're going to break something. Don't break it. Wiring this stuff is real simple. Okay. So I'm going to get back to finishing this job up. It's almost done. I just have to uh, wire up the front. Uh, to the battery and to a ground, and we're all good. Okay, so out here at night again. Finally, we're getting this thing done. I've already hooked it up to the battery. I'm going to show you exactly what I did. It's not that difficult to figure out. <coughs> and when we're, uh, excuse me, 
uh, then I'm going to finish this video up and actually put it online, which would be cool. All right, so uh, let me show you what I've done so far. All right, first thing we did was we took our battery cables, we snipped the ends off, the clamps, which was painful, yes. Then we made sure we had enough to come around and loop. I grounded it to the truck, put ends on here, okay, make sure they're the right size, taped it up, hooked it here for power, then brought the positive over to here, okay, hold on, bad camera work, tighten that down, all right, and then we cut it here also uh, to start with, got this to go all the way around to here. And then the other half of this one we put here so it runs through our breaker and you are hooked up, okay? Uh, per, you know, make sure you're using ends. Don't try to hook it to uh, clamps, you know, that kind of thing. Use the clamps that came with it. Uh, they too easy to vibrate loose. And then you got shorts and everything else. Also, anything you can. Put a fuse, fuse link in between at least so that you have plenty of spots for it to just, you know, completely shut down. And that includes like from the inverter to the switch and the switch to the plug and that I did in here and everything. I've already tested it. It works perfect. Um, all the connections are good. There were no sparks when I hooked up the positive or the negative. All right, so um, there's a few safety things I'll put in uh, the beginning of the video, you know, that are basically rehashing what I've already told you. But this is very simple, red to red, black to the truck, okay? And uh, also run it through your, uh, this here, the... Uh, fuse block or not the fuse block but the um excuse me the uh, breaker here and you know one on one side one on the other it tells you which one it is on this particular one uh input and output so no problem and you know you can disable it anytime you want by pushing this red button okay you see that little red thing popped out that means that the line is broken the power stops here once this goes like that the power is going through again to the inverter which is off and the way you turn it on is with the switch inside and uh, then you can use it for whatever it is you're using on this battery cable the closer the inverter is to the battery the better off you are okay also the shorter the wires are the cables rather the better off you are less um you'll lose less power that way me i wanted it inside because i'm not going to be running power tools or anything heavy on it maybe a light possibly a coffee pot if there's a hurricane and mostly just for charging phones and, and little things like that so it's fine okay and i have the option on the other end to cut the wire shorter but it's not really going to help because it's so far it's under the back seat it's kind of big for under the front seat and it's too big to put in here anywhere so that's that. I hope you learned something. If you liked the video, let me know. Um, please like it. Uh, subscribe. Uh, share it if you wish. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time on DIY with Jerry's Garage. Thank you.